I have now ridden 134 roller coasters across North America, and today I'll be showing you my 25 favorite of them all. 109 coasters I've ridden will not make this list, so let's see what coasters are at least at the top 19% of my list. Number 25 is Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. This is such a nasty ride. It has a solid drop, some good pos positives, really fun inversions, and a violent ejector airtime moment at the end. This is for sure one of the more underrated steel coasters I've ever done. It's paced well, it has negative G's, positive G's. There's not that much the thing is bad at. You can argue the restraints are bad, but to me, they add to the ride intensity. Number 24 is Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. This ride is very overrated. It wasn't very memorable for me. The drop was fun and the ride felt fast, but it's a very short ride that doesn't have very many elements. And the airtime hills were fun, but nothing special at all. It's a fun ride for sure, but it's nothing crazy. Number 23 is Candemonium at Hershey Park. I have similar opinions on this with Leviathan, except it's at least memorable. It had a better drop and a really good off-axis hill in the back row. The theming is also very cool with the candy. I never really got room for airtime on this ride, so it's pretty overrated. I've heard from some people that this has some awesome airtime for a B&M Hyper, and I couldn't disagree more. This thing lacks that big time. Which is why it isn't higher on this list. Number 22 is Thunderhead at Dollywood. My opinion on this changed drastically after my recent visit to the park. I rode it towards the front every time like I was hoping for and it was amazing. The airtime up front is incredible. You get insanely ejected back to back to back on these elements, especially when you loosen the seatbelt. This ride is so much more comfortable in the front too. It's a lot smoother and overall it's more fun by miles. Number 21 is Banshee at Kings Island. This is what gave me the biggest hope that I could love all inverts that aren't Batman clones. This ride is incredible. The inversions are pure fun. This gives some great hang time. You can't get headbanging because of the vest restraints, which I definitely wish more inverts had. The Heartland Roll provides some of the best hang time I've experienced, and this ride gets way too much hate by enthusiasts who love getting their feet ripped off to pieces over having fun. Number 20 is Millennium Force to Cedar Point. I used to love this coaster way more than I do now. It used to just be pure fun but an intense ride. It's still pure fun, but not as much as before. It has some really good positives, and you really do feel the speed on it. But it doesn't provide you with airtime, which is a big problem. The layout isn't very strong either, and the drop is overrated. Overall, it's a good ride, but a little overrated by some people. And just way too overrated by a certain enthusiast whose name starts with C, who will upload after football season. Number 19 is Batman the Ride at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This is an SNS 40 free spin, and y'all know how much I love this thing. The spinning feels so out of control. And that's what I love about this ride. It's so out of control that it's a little scary. It will be thrown everywhere possible in your seat. You'll definitely know what every part of your seat feels like by the end of it. This is an underrated, overhated on hang time machine that I had such a blast riding. And man, I wish I vlogged from Fiesta, Texas, because I was blown away. Number 18 is Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Over Georgia. This ride blew me away, especially that pretzel loop. This is really the only notable element from the ride, so I can't put this coaster any higher. But it is one of my all-time favorite elements on a roller coaster. It's incredibly insane. I can't wait to try more flying coasters with pretzel loops in the future. I really enjoyed the flying aspect too. Overall, really cool. Number 17 is Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This ride shows me why Gravity Group is so great. They provide some of the best drops on wooden coasters, some awesome airtime, laterals, and they have better restraints than GCI. This ride has all of the above. That drop is one of my favorites because of that awesome full ejector you get while twisting on the drop. This has a pretty good view as well. I'm definitely a huge fan of this ride. Number 16 is Top Thor's Dragster at Cedar Point. This is probably the second craziest ride I've ever experienced. Launching from 0 to 120 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds is a feeling you can rarely ever experience. This ride is very short, but I love the launch coming down the top hat and the feeling of speed on the final straight track heading into the brakes. When this is actually open, I always try getting on it. Number 15 is Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This is another fantastic ride that feels really short and provides some of the most insane airtime you can ever feel. I don't like the restraints on them that much because they do dig into your shoulders quite a bit, but it is still a great ride. Number 14 is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. 
I really just love the sense of speed, intensity, and scenery on this thing, but a couple of those ejector time hills are incredible. There's one right before the double down that flings you so hard out of your seat. I prefer a middle row on this, believe it or not, I'm not really sure why, but that's how it is. This is definitely my favorite ride at Kennywood, I enjoyed it. Number 13 is Orion at Kings Island. Spoiler alert, this is not even a top 5 B&M I've ridden. I love B&M, if you didn't know that already. And even so, this ride is just so fun to ride. That first drop is a blast. Those airtime hills are a blast. And that final airtime hill before the brakes is a blast. This is my favorite Giga coaster I've ridden of the three. That might change this year. For now, it's my favorite Giga. Number 12 is Hydra at Dorney Park. I love this ride so much. It has an incredible drop, incredible inversions, and awesome Jojo roll. The hang timing experience on this is great. It's pretty smooth, and it's one of the most underrated coasters I've ever ridden. It's definitely my favorite floorless coaster out there. I love this thing, and definitely my favorite coaster at the park. Number 11 is Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland. This B&M Hyper is insanely good. I need rerides on it now for sure, though, to really remember how good the airtime was. I remember knowing it didn't have the most amazing airtime, but I remember thinking that it was a fun coaster, causing some butterflies in your stomach. The helix was intense, and the final hills did actually give some pretty nice airtime. There's a reason I think this is by far the best roller coaster in the park. Just making my current top 10 is Wild Eagle at Dollywood. It was at my number 12 spot previously, and I even got 10 new credits since then. But this still moved up just into my top 10. This ride is so fun. And it's hard to believe that some people, especially someone that made a song with me about inverts, hates this thing. It's one of the most fun things I've experienced. The drop is indeed world class. The inversions are so fun and actually very intense. The helixes are intense. The ride's intensity doesn't get enough credit at all. The scenery on this ride is incredible too. And ride this in the back, it's an awesome experience. Best restraints are not bad. Number 9 is Goliath. No, not that Goliath. This Goliath has six flags over Georgia. This ride definitely grew on me throughout the days. It just kept on getting better. That first drop is actually pretty underwhelming considering it's a hyper coaster. But the first two hills give very fun and decent airtime towards the front. That helix is very intense and those final hills give insanely good airtime in the back especially. In the back in particular you get lifted up coming down from the hills. By the time you can start coming down the momentum from the front of the train rising over the next hill, makes you slam into your clamshell restraint before you can even come down into your strength to begin with. Also, that pop into the brakes is legit one of the best moments of the ride, and I enjoy it just as much as the first drop. You fly violently into your restraint, again, especially in the back, and it's such an underrated moment on the ride. This ride is definitely great in every row, but my favorite is probably the back. I really love this coaster. Number 8 is Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. I did have this a couple spots lower, but I really thought about it. This drop is most likely top 5 of all time for me. The quarry wall drop is an elite element. The scenery is actually very good. I love zero G rolls and I love tunnels. This thing does lose pacing on top of the wall, but it's definitely a fun ride. Great RMC, and it'll be a low tier RMC for me, I can tell. But either way, it's a great ride. Number 7 is Ride of Steel at Six Flags Darien Lake. This is a king at being underrated. The drop is one of my all time favorites. The Camelbacks give really underrated BM Hyper Lake airtime. The Helixes and Straight Track are intense. And the final airtime hills are incredible. I cannot wait to get back here in a little more than a month. It's going to be so much fun getting back here for the first time in forever to ride this insanely good ride. Maybe I'm just a little homesick from not riding this ride, but we'll see. Number 6 is Skyrush at Hershey Park. I really had to use my head on this one before putting this any higher. It's definitely the craziest ride out there, but I do enjoy riding 5 other coasters better than this. It's still an elite ride. It still makes you go insane. The airtime on it is out of this world. Literally, that's where it's trying to throw you to. The positives on this are great as well. And the laterals you get on the Stangle Dives are insane. It was my 100th credit, and it's one of my all-time favorite rides. Number 5 is Maverick at Cedar Point. I've never stopped loving this ride. It never gets old. That's impossible. It really has all you want in a coaster. A good drop, good scenery, good laterals, good whip, good inversions, good airtime, good intensity, good launch. The restraints are really the worst part of the ride, but I don't really dislike them that much. 
just because of the rest of the good things this ride has to offer. It almost adds to the ride, but maybe just a little bit, kind of like Fahrenheit. If you said this was still your favorite ride in the park, I completely understand, because this is a fantastic ride that truly has it all. Top four all time, and number four is Diamondback at Kings Island. It's going to be extremely tough for any b and Hyper to beat this in the future, even Shambhala. I love the amazing every time you get cresting in the hills. It's almost scary how much you rise out of your seat on this ride. You can also get some insane room on the ride. The splashdown is very fun, and you can get wet if you sit in the back, which is the best row on the ride by a mile. It does have a rattle that lasts for a couple seconds after the turnaround, but that doesn't stop it from being by far the best ride in the park, and my fourth favorite roller coaster currently overall. Number three goes to Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. This is an RMC and it's underrated. Like, how's that even possible? This gives me hope that future RMCs I ride will be absolutely insane. This reminds me why RMC is my favorite roller coaster manufacturer. Alan Chilke really worked his magic on this one. The airtime you experience here is some of the strongest I've felt. The drop is super good and that wave turn is a blast. This ride is definitely short in terms of duration and height, but that doesn't stop it from currently making my top 3. And in every review I watched, people talked about how loud this lift hill is. But honestly, for an RMC, it was extremely quiet. I don't get why it was so mentioned so much. This lift hill is loud to the point where you can barely hear other people on the train. But a ride like Steve is so loud that it hurts your ears. Just something to point out. Not important at all. And the color scheme on this ride is sick. I love that shade of blue. This coaster is honestly a masterpiece. I thought about this again because I already only put Lightning Ride about half a point above Steel Vengeance. And the scenery definitely got worse on Lightning Ride. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, my number one coaster is still not Steel Vengeance. I have it at number two still. But this can easily change I think this year. I had my best ride on Steel Vengeance last year and it still wasn't enough to beat Lightning Rod. No matter what, I wasn't willing to put Steel Vengeance back at number one. But now with the good scenery gone on Lightning Rod, I can see Steel Vengeance potentially taking back the crown. It's way longer, which I love, and has a higher fun factor, so we shall see. But right now, my number one coaster is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. Steel Vengeance is no match as far as the strength of airtime. The drop is solid, the wave turn is great towards the front. The second twist and shout and quad down are both goaded. I do actually prefer this ride in rows 5 and 6 because you get a good and whippy drop, but you also get a great wave turn experience, and the other elements are great no matter what. The ride itself doesn't feel too much different now that it's a hybrid coaster, but the amazing scenery leaving during the ride definitely sucks. This ride isn't quite as good as in 2020 to me because of that, but the airtime is stronger than on Steve and it's still a launch. But I don't know, right now it's my favorite roller coaster. But really, I don't prefer either of them. I like riding them just as much as each other, but I'm not going to change it until I get another ride on Steel Vengeance like I got last year. If that happens, this may change. We'll see. That'll conclude my top 25 this April of 2021. Let me know your thoughts on this video down below. I try to form my opinions based on how much I like the rides and not based on how much everybody else likes them. So if my opinions are different than most other people, then too bad. I'm sorry I didn't copy and paste the generic top 100 coasters in the world that people reacted to in 2018. You don't know how coasters are re really are until you ride them, and hopefully there will be a lot more coasters out there that surprise me in good ways. That'll be all. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. Just kidding. That's not all. So I forgot to record this. I'm going to be right here. You can see the um, the key basically for my top 25, how many from every manufacturer and how many from every um, park, like what park they've been to and um, opening year. So you can see those uh, statistics also, um, wood or steel. So yeah, you're going to see those four things. I figured it's a pretty cool thing maybe i'll start doing it let me know if you like this new idea to in include in my ranking videos but um yeah that's all i need to say um yeah like comment subscribe i'll see you ne next time